Saturday night of week one, we've got what looks like the biggest game of the entire slate. You've got first-year head coach Mike Elko and his Texas A&M Fight Naggies. They're going to host Marcus Freeman's Notre Dame Fighting Irish. This one's on Saturday, August 31st, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. Uh, and that's, you know, that's right, night game at Kyle Field. Uh, at BetUS, the Aggies are currently a one-point favorite, and the market total is 48 and a half. And, boy, the uh, the storylines are just all over the place here, right? A&M's new coach, Mike Elko, he's the former defensive coordinator at both A&M and Notre Dame. Uh, the Irish starting quarterback, Riley Leonard, he was the starting quarterback for Elko at Duke the past two seasons. Uh, new A&M offensive coordinator, Colin Klein, he came from Kansas State, but he turned down Notre Dame two years ago when Marcus Freeman was hired, and he tried to hire him as an OC. There's a ton of of overlap here, fellas. Kyle, let's start with you. It, it, this is a good test for Freeman and company, right? I mean, it's a program that's in year three of a build versus an SEC program in game one of a new era. Uh, what are you thinking? I mean, Notre Dame, 60% production returning, according to Connolly's uh, production return ranks. Uh, this is a offense kind of helped by the combo of Riley Leonard and Denbrock. I think Denbrock is a good hire. Um, the offensive line lost some really high-end talent. Notre Dame's been great on the offensive line the last few years. Uh, can they continue to be top-notch? Uh, that's definitely a big question mark. Wide receivers have been a big strength or a big weakness here, and they're trying to turn that into a strength. I think they're still far from elite uh, wide receiver. Um, we're going to find out pretty quick how good Notre Dame's wide receivers are. I think the defense is led by maybe the best safety in the country in Watts. I mean, he's excellent. Uh, Defensive tackles are great at stuffing the run. The pass rush, kind of a bit of a question mark. Um, probably the defense down slightly, but the defense will be very solid. Texas A&M, what do we make of Texas A&M? Well, probably like the biggest wild card in the country at this point. If you told me Elko would go out there, stun the world, have an amazing year at Texas A&M, it would not surprise me. However, you know, if it takes some time, A&M is only decent. It wouldn't be shocking at all either. Not a team I'd want to place a season win total wager on either way. Uh, I think that'd be a pretty dangerous one. Elko's top notch. Things are going to improve in College Station. It's just a matter of how long it takes. Um, Colin Klein, great hire, definitely. I think Barber from Troy will do good at wide receiver. Uh, they, they did a good job filling in for the talent that was lost at wide receiver. And uh, Purdue, uh, the sack leader coming in to lead the defensive line. The weakness of the defense is cornerback for me, uh, Texas A&M. But I think Elko's great defensive schemer. He'll try to do his best to cover that up. Um, again, uh, another one where I think uh, having a strong lean on this game is pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. Parker, uh, like Kyle said, we can probably expect big things from the Notre Dame defense here. But, you know, I, I think the matchup to watch is the Irish offense against the new A&M defense. Uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Scourton coming in from Purdue, you know, climbing up draft boards, really, really kind of overperformed at, at Purdue and should slot in nicely, give them a lot of dyna dynamism on the defensive line, immediately test Notre Dame, losing both of their tackles and Fisher and Alt uh, to the NFL. So, so you know, uh, well, the, the benefit for Notre Dame there is that Riley Leonard has been great at improvising. Given that he's healthy, um, I think we've seen that Denbrock can highlight a quarterback strength if he's got the right guy. I mean, hell, look at Desmond Ritter. I mean, and what he did in the <laughs> NFL, right? Like, uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. That team was a... Uh, a playoff team uh we're, we're and so so certainly interested in that notre dame uh you know number one in um pass defense going to the other side of the ball there last year and what i'm really interested in is uh texas a&m losing bryce foster losing laden robinson on the interior defensive line notre dame is bringing back howard cross and riley mills both of those guys over 11 percent pressure rate inside so that's not as an edge rusher you know cross move around a little bit but from the interior i really think that um Notre Dame and, and Freeman are going to have a lot of fun kind of testing this Texas A&M offensive line saying, hey, Connor Wegman, you're you're talented and you're a dual threat. Colin Klein has, has really been able to, you know, give a quarterback that running option and and really develop an offense. I'm high on them long term, but immediately I think Notre Dame is going to give uh, A&M fits up the middle on defense. So we'll see how they um, uh, adapt there. Again, I, I keep coming back to like what if with Texas A&M, what if Mike Elko with a talent advantage is, is good? What if A&M really can get out of their own way and let their playmakers play and have a culture of discipline and they've got some stars on both sides of the ball? I'm really interested here. If Notre Dame, uh, excuse me, if Texas A&M was a dog, I'd be all over it. But the books, the books know they're, they're, they're watching it. Absolutely. Uh, this is a situation where it does feel like Texas A&M, we're going to learn a lot about both teams here, but I think Texas A&M with, with the uncertainty has the higher tail 
of positive variance here than than Notre Dame. So I'm watching that interior defensive line for for Notre Dame, seeing how the Texas A&M offense responds to it. And then, of course, yeah, I want to see what Denbrock and Riley Leonard can do without those tackles. Notre Dame, you know, you mentioned they've only got two starting offensive linemen back. They lost three guys, but the three new guys were all in the program last year. All mm-hmm. five offensive linemen are at least six foot four and at least 300 pounds. Uh, they're going to be fine there, right? The biggest question to me is whether or not Elko and, you know, potentially six transfer starters on defense can steam up something to stop that former quarterback, right? Leonard, I, I've got Notre Dame as a slight favorite here. I, I think the question becomes like, what number do you put for home field advantage for these guys? I'd, I'd be terrified if I'm an Irish fan, uh, but I'm, I'm heavily leaning Notre Dame plus the one here. I, I think they should be favored. I think they should win the game. You never know. I mean, Elko showed that he can come in right off the bat at Duke and he won nine games there for the first time in what? 30 some odd years or at the second time in like 60 years or something. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, but we'll, you can know, I, we'll can I ask you guys a question yeah. about this from a handicaps perspective? Um, we know that we're in a 12 man playoff now. Um, and we know that Notre Dame is kind of boxed out of that. And just by the structure of it has a little bit of a light, longer, uh, shorter leash rather. Uh, do you guys think that factors into motivation situation, what they're willing to put on film early in the season, Texas A&M theoretically could lose this game and be fine to even host a playoff game to get a buy in the first round. But Notre Dame losing this puts them so far behind the eight ball. They have to be perfect for the rest of the season. Does that factor into how you guys are approaching this matchup? I, I think so. Yeah. Kyle, do you kind of feel the same? I think so. It's not really something I thought about too much, but it's definitely a good point, Um, you know, because kind of the changing landscape, uh, one game means more to somebody than it does to somebody else, especially this early in the season. So I think that's definitely a fair point and one that I'll need to think about more. Yeah, this is I mean, that Notre Dame schedule is not exactly the most difficult. There's a couple of games on there that you really have to show out that you need to win, because if you lose this game and you lose to uh, USC or Florida State, one of those. I don't know if 10 and two gets you into the playoff with the rest of the schedule. So I definitely need to make sure that you get games like this on the board. Uh 